but Google do it. Okay, this is Ahmed Bouadiki, but you can call me Slorks. And in today's new segments, I'm going to be covering a lot of things that are related to software, but also a little bit of hardware. And we're going to be doing something new. We're going to be talking about a vehicle. I'm talking about the Ford F-150 Lightning. So let's jump into it and discuss Harmony OS. Harmony OS officially is going to be announced on June 2nd. And I say officially announced this because right now we have it in beta and we didn't see it actually being on a phone. And what we can see from those teasers is the fact that this is actually the camera bump on the Huawei P50. So it's going to be on a phone. This is a crown of a watch. So it's going to be on a watch. And this is the pen that is used with the tablet. So it's also going to be on a tablet. There you go. Huawei is showing you that it's going to be available on a number of ranges and devices. And that's what Harmony is supposed to do. But I honestly still do not think that this will solve the ultimate problem that Huawei is facing. And that's developer support. That's app support. That's WhatsApps and the Instagrams and the Twitters being available officially on those phones. Hopefully it gets sorted out, but personally, I don't see it happening. Let me know down below. What do you think? Another thing that's coming and it's coming really fast is WWDC 21, which is going to be on June 7th. We're talking about a week from today. And as always, it's going to be the one where they discuss all the operating systems that Apple runs. We're talking about iOS 15, iPad OS 15, and Mac OS 12 among Apple TV and, uh, and of course, Watch OS 8. So I'm really excited for this event, mostly because when Apple announced last year in WWDC, the M1 chip, they said it's going to be a two year transition before they move from Intel to Apple Silicon. Well, we're halfway there and the only products that we've seen so far are consumer products, you know, none of the professional products are still available. So I'm hoping that we do see some sort of announcement for a new variant or a more powerful variant of the M1 chip, be as it may M1X or M2, and some sort of announcement for a professional MacBooks like a MacBook Pro 16 replacement, a iMac Pro replacement, or even a Mac Pro replacement. God knows, but that's very exciting for me. But also on the flip side, I'm really excited for iPad OS 15 in particular, because I do want to see Apple utilizing the new, very powerful Apple iPad Pro M1 chip, where it's still, you know, limited because of software. So I do hope we see some sort of professional support for this device, where for me personally, honestly, if there's Final Cut Pro available on the iPad, I'd switch to it. That will be my main machine. I'll hook that up with a dongle and have it set up on two displays keyboard and mouse, and that will literally be my machine. Do you agree with me? Do you think Apple is delaying Final Cut Pro in particular as a creator for videos like myself on the iPad on purpose, just so they can keep us using a Mac? I'd love to know. But also speaking of software, Google finally, here, let me, let's do picture in picture here. Uh, Google finally, finally showed Fushi OS. If you're not familiar, Fushi OS has been a, a Easter egg for the longest time with uh, Google. Um, it's supposed to be the operating system to replace Android and, and what have you. And finally, we see it coming out on a physical device and it's a Nest Hub, right? And the thing is, um, Google obviously wants to use this operating system on, on IoT things for now, but who's to say that it's not gonna be available on phones and, and more complicated devices in the future. But as of right now, it's a software that is available on uh, IoT things from Google in terms of hardware. And it's supposed to give you an intuitive software experience where it's supposed to work very well and seamlessly with other products. And talking about smartwatches, phones, tablets, even computers, televisions, cars, one software to rule them all. And what makes it different from, from Android today is one key component that will make this software become intuitive and seamless even more and an actual replacement for Android, in my personal opinion, is the fact that it's not built on Linux. No, it's built on Zircon, which is something that Google developed themselves. That means it could be a closed source project, right? It doesn't need to be an open source. That also means that Google can control the software from end to end and can control the way that you experience it and make it better over the time kind of like iOS and macOS on the Apple side of the world. But with this, this is an old video showing how um, Fuchsia would look like, preferably on a phone if it does come out, intuitive in terms of how you navigate and do all that stuff. But as you can see here, it is not Linux. It's actually built on something that Google developed themselves. So it might be something that we are looking for that can replace the whole Android thing where it's lacking in terms of software support and the fragmentation that we see in terms of hardware on other devices, specifically for mobile phones. But also, will it have the same problems that Microsoft had in terms of app support? It shouldn't. Because what they did with this is they actually introduced the SDK that is similar to what you need as a developer for all the apps, the billions apps that are already available in the App Store or the Google Play Store 
to easily migrate on Fuchsia OS with close to zero or very minimum effort. So as a developer, you can actually, you know, make your app become more useful on Fuchsia or you can let it run as it is on Android. And I hope that Google does slap the wrist of a lot of those developers so they can actually make those make their quality become better um, just like it is on the iOS side. So as I was editing, I, I came to realize something. Why does Google have to replace Android with Fuchsia? Why can't they both coexist? Hear me out. What if we have iOS for Apple and we have Fuchsia for Google, but then we also have Android for everybody, right? I mean, it doesn't mean just because Fuchsia is coming, Android has to go away. It could be its own thing with Google, its own closed end operating system, which gives you a unique experience. And then you will have literally a third option in the market. If you want, you can use Google products and be invested in that ecosystem, or you can be an Apple, you know, and invested in that ecosystem, or you can be an Android person and just use whatever OEM. Just a thought. Let's get back to the video. So I'm really excited for Fuchsia, to be honest. I'm really excited for Fuchsia. Do I think it will replace Android? Yeah, eventually, not anytime soon. But right now we're gonna see it on a lot of IoT things. Obviously in the future, it will somehow take some form or function to replace Android. But we're not talking about a year or two, we're talking minimum, I think four or five years in terms of how it's gonna transform to become something useful. So you have nothing to worry about in terms of the Android side, given it's the number one operating system today. But this gets me really excited. And finally, let's get to the Ford Lightning, F-150 Lightning uh, pickup truck that's uh, all EV truck from, from Ford. Now, this is a big deal because of a lot of things. First of all, this is the F-150, the number one selling vehicle in the United States. And it's it's a truck, but they didn't go the cyber truck route. No, they went with the traditional truck route. They went with the F-150 route. So it looks like a truck, it feels like a truck, it behaves like a truck. However, it's EVs. So they did add a lot of things uh, on the truck to make it more useful in that sense. First of all, the intelligent power backup. Obviously you can charge the truck at your house, but if there's a power outage, you can use the truck to back up your house as a backup generator, which is phenomenal. I'm not saying this will keep your house lit for weeks or months, but it will keep it lit for a couple of days until you get salvaged or until you get a backup or until you get your electricity running. This is a welcoming thing given that in the United States specifically, they've had power shortages and outages this last winter, it was really harsh. And if this was there, it would have backed up your house. Another thing is the DC outlets that they're gonna have. They have one on the back with this guy, look at this guy going to town with a chainsaw. You got this guy with a power tool plugged it into the front. Obviously there's no engine. So they use this space to, to become a storage compartment for your tools or for your luggage or for, you know, whatever. You, so you can use multiple outlets at the same time. There's a huge 15.5 inch display in the front over the air software updates, but I like the fact that they kept the volume knob um, it's, it looks weird, but it's more functional that way. And yeah, again, it just looks like a normal truck. Um, this is the knob again, if you want to look at it. Um, they also have a new software, uh, which you can use Ford pass app and it works intuitively with the, with the operating system that they have built in into the, into the truck. So that works very well. The application, you can use it to turn on the car or you open up the trunks or whatever, um, uh, your compartments very, very easily. And you can get around those things. There's also, yeah, here we go. Look at that. You can charge your car from your house or you can use that ha the car to power up your house because of the really powerful 9.6 kilowatts that can give you 120 to 240 volts, depending on the usage and depending how much you use of it. The powertrain of the truck is gonna have two motors, one in the front, one in the back, and the battery packs are gonna be in the middle, so it gives it a very good weight distribution. And of course, you're gonna be familiar with the dimensions, given it's an F-150, so there's no surprises there. You don't need to worry about it fitting in your garage or in the parking spot, or if you take a grocery shopping or in the malls or anything like that. That is something, by the way, that I always suffer from with my Trail Boss. I own a Silverado Trail Boss, and it is a two inch lifted from the factory. So there are places where if I go into underground parking, it does rub. So this is something to keep in mind if you're actually thinking about the Cybertruck. This is something you don't need to worry about with F-150. Here again, we're looking at the 15.5 inch. I like this. I like the fact that the volume knob is built into the display. So you can use the touch panel all around it, including in the middle here, but you do have a traditional volume knob. So if you're driving, you don't need to worry about you reaching out for the knob properly. And there's a lot of things that you can do with the drive modes and the display that you have in the middle in the driver console. 
and also the things that you can do for towing. There's a towing assist and the hitch assist and all that stuff that you can use and utilize with the cameras and the software. There's a scale in the bed, which I thought was genius. So, so you know how much you're actually carrying it. So you are within the legal weight and also within, within the weight that is not harmful for your truck. And the hitch assistant, there's also a balance feature available on the application, which is phenomenal. So you know that you're not adding weight to the bed of the truck or you're adding weight or strain to whatever you're hitching. Uh, there's also hitch assist to uh, navigate properly when you're actually reversing. There is also a front view for your hitch assist, which gives you guidance so you know how to turn and if it's actually uh, showing more on the left or right side so you know that it's centered. A lot of new features. One of the features that I actually also liked is this lighting feature. So it gives you an enhanced lighting zone as they call it. So when you're actually using the truck at night, you can see exactly what's going on around you. And of course, there's this thing they call the blue drive as well. Look at that, the trunk is huge. So you have a lot of room so you can actually um, utilize the space that's gonna be given given that there is no engine anymore. I really like this truck. I'm never, I was, I'm always a GM guy. I'm a Chevy guy, a Cadillac guy, a Pontiac guy, trust me. I've never been a fan of Ford, but this F Ford F-150, I really like it. I like it a lot. And I hope that GM does take a lot of this into consideration when they actually convert the GMC Sierra or the Chevrolet to Silverado, the truck that I drive, and take all those things into consideration because the car of my dreams right now is this monster. I'm talking about the GMC Hummer EV, but that's a completely different monster. It's like a beast on off-road, more than a utilitarian truck where you can use it traditionally kind of like the F-150. No, it's a behemoth. I, I can talk about it in another video if you want to just make sure you give this video a like. But I really like what Ford did with the F-150 Lightning. Please let me know down below what do you would think it'll help transition the move even much faster than the Cybertruck, for example, because I was one of those people when I saw the Cybertruck, I'm like, that's not for me. I was a little bit offended as a truck driver. But um, yeah, I want to see the market head the F-150 direction more or less, especially with a lot of things you can do in the bed, like the tailgate table and, and the tools and all that stuff. Yeah, I like that. So this has been it for this week in terms of the news. I know I usually don't talk about cars, but yeah, I love cars and uh, stuff like that does excite me. Let me know down below if you want to see more content related to that in the future, we can make it happen. And as always, thank you guys for watching the video all the way to the end. And please do consider subscribing if you are enjoying this type of content. And as always, please do not forget our brothers and sisters in Palestine to include them in your pair. It's the least you can do. Just include them in your pair and uh, yeah. I guess this, uh, I guess this is it. And as always, people, take it easy.